have YouTube. So in today's video, we will be looking into the lying leg raises, which is one of the most common exercises performed by everyone when it comes to hitting your lower abs. But I've seen that a lot of people complain about their lower back pain as they perform this exercise. And they also use the worst approach when it comes to fixing this pain by keeping their arms under their hips as they perform this leg raises. Before we fix this issue, let's see which muscle plays a key role while performing the leg raises. As you can see in this pic, it's the iliopsoas muscle that is our hip flexors which plays a key role when it comes to performing the leg raises. As you can see from here, it starts from our hips and attaches to our lower spine. So as you perform the leg raises, it also plays a key role to maintain your lower back stability. So as you perform the leg raises, this muscle gets contracted and pulls your lower spine upward. That's why you see some curve at your lower spine. So to fix this issue, it's necessary that you contract your abs properly and don't allow this muscle to elevate your spine by contracting and pressing your abs down. So engaging your lower abs is key when it comes to resolving this problem instead of keeping your arms under the hips. So I will be giving you a step-by-step -step process to hit your lower abs efficiently and reduce your lower back pain as you perform this exercise. So before we start this video, let's see why placing your arms behind your hips while performing these leg raises is the worst approach when it comes to fixing your lower back pain. The major cause of your lower back pain is the lack of core muscle engagement which forces the back to curve as you lift the leg leading towards this pain. And if you place your arms at the hips, it will give you a temporary relief from the pain by creating slight elevation. But it won't improve your core engagement. As you can see here, when I lower down my legs, the curve at my lower back increases due to the arm placement. So placing your arms behind the hips actually deviates the purpose of this exercise by working more on your hip flexors and less on your core muscles. As you can see here, we all have some natural curve at our lower back, which varies based upon your posture. If you are facing anterior pelvic tilt, then it would be more as compared to a person who has a good posture. But our idea here is to flatten this curve by pulling your spine towards the floor using your core muscles. This would be our first step to improve core engagement and also resolve any anterior pelvic tilt issues if you are facing them. As you learn to engage your core muscles keeping the feet on the ground, repeat the same process by lifting your legs off the ground. Once you get comfortable with the core engagement and flattening your lumbar curve, add some dynamic knee raises maintaining this spinal position. Since lowering down the leg is a bit easier as compared to raising them, we can now start with alternate leg drops maintaining the spinal position and keeping the other leg bent will provide you the assistance for core engagement. But make sure that you don't lose your core engagement until your leg touches the floor. Practice the earlier variation for a few weeks and as you build some core strength, it would be easier for you to drop both legs together. But again you have to make sure that you don't lose your core engagement till your legs completely reach towards the floor. So while performing this variation, you can raise your leg by bending at your knees but while dropping them, you have to extend your knees and tighten up your core muscles strictly. As we have already built some core strength now, we can start with alternate leg raises by keeping the other leg bent at the knees. The bent knee helps to provide assistance with our core engagement, so this variation would be a bit easier as compared to the both leg one. Practicing all these variations for a few weeks will build enough core strength for you to perform a complete leg raises with full engagement of your core muscles and least involvement of your lower back. But as you are progressing towards full leg raises, don't lower down your leg completely. Start with lowering down to a point where you feel your back is curving and you are losing the core engagement. 
use that point as a threshold and don't drop your legs further. Slowly as you progress, keep on increasing your drop range and try to reach towards the floor without losing your lower abs involvement and curving on your back. Next video. And we will meet in the next video.